Hello everyone, my name is Florence Moreau. Uh, I'm the CTO and co-founder of Incepto Medical and I'm delighted uh, today to present you what we are doing and uh, how uh, we are also using AWS Cloud to do what we are doing. So Incepto Medical, so we are a startup that is just located here, if you want to see at the, at, uh, at the end of this uh, pitch what we are doing and some more demos. And what we are doing is that we are co-creating and distributing AI-based applications for medical imaging. So we are in the radiology world. So how many of you know kind of a little bit at least the radiology world? Yes, so we still have some persons. Great. So we are in the radiology world, so in health care and radiology. And what we are providing is AI-based applications so that we help automate the radiologist's job and we help accelerate uh, it so that patients at the end, so you and me, uh, could benefit from more time of the radiologist. And why are we doing so? so uh, it's too rapid. So very old way is, is kind of good here. So why are we doing so? Is Because today there is a, a question of overwhelming data uh, that, that a radiologist is reading. So another question for you is how do you think, how many do you, uh, images do you think a, a radiologist is looking at during one day when he's just reviewing CT images? So CT acquisition based image during one day. What is the number of images? So there is of course one answer, but feel free to just pull some, some numbers. 20. So 20, it's probably this scene for just one patient. So 20 is not exactly the right answer. It's not the same magnitude of uh, number. Thousands. It's, it's better, but a little more than thousands because just one, 100, no, 1,500 images is just for one city of one patient. So we are not in the thousands of images. In the, in the radiologist world, one radiologist during a whole day is looking at 35, 40 patients during one day. So he's looking at 50,000 images. So five, zero, 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 zero. 50,000 images. So it means that it's quasi in inhuman and we have to do something to automate uh, his job. And the radiologists are ready uh, for, for deep learning and for automation of their job because they need to be uh, help on, on reading these kind of images. So then to, to give more concrete example of what does it mean? So in this table, and you probably can't see it from the, the, the other part of, the, of, the, of, of this place, we have in columns a different kind of acquisitions. So you have CT, you have MR, you have PET, you have conventional radiography, so all the, the different columns. And in, in the different lines, you can see the different type of uh, pathology or anatomy. So you have the uh, musculoskeletal, that is the one that is in red. You have everything that is linked to abdominal, to, con to oncology, uh, to, uh, I don't know, uh, thoracic uh, kind of image. And at each intersection of a line and a colon, you can have one too many kind of applications. For example, if you see here MR and musculoskeletal, we are working today on an application for MR knee images. But as you can imagine, there are also applications for MR ankle, MR elbow, etc., etc. So it means a lot of potential applications to be able to uh, fit to the different needs of the radiologist with these 50,000 uh, images per day. So to do an application regularly, and as an introduction, I said AI-based application, but AI is just part of it. AI is where we are really training the models so that at the end, we have an algorithm that runs. But we start with, with a first, what is the right clinical question we have to answer? And this is not easy, and it's where we have the, the meeting of clinical experts with data scientists and with developers to then be able to define correctly what we want to automate. 
then we, you regularly uh, can read uh, that we need to have a lot of images. Yes, we need to have a lot of images, but we need to have a lot of enriched images. If I just get, if I take the example of Emani that uh, was just before, if I just get images from Emani but doesn't know what is the pathology that is present in the, in the Emani image, the deep learning can't do anything from it. So we need to have enriched data, and this enrichment comes from the expertise from clinicians. And it's what we provide inside Incepto, is we provide a platform to, to uh, collect data, to anonymize them, standardize them, and annotate them, so enrich them, to then be able to train. So this is one part of the platform. Then, when you have the algorithm, it's just research. You are in, in the air of the R&D part. We need to integrate this algorithm into the clinical workflow. As we are in healthcare domain, it means a validation of the algorithm so that it, it applies also to a larger population of patients. Then we need to have an integration in the regular workflow of a radiologist today. So these are the different aspects, plus for sure, the distribution that would be common. So in Septo, as I explained in the introduction, you are doing the two aspects, distribution of some of the solutions that already exist today. For example, for mammography, we are not doing it alone, even if it's something that uh, represents 4 million of, of examinations per year in France. We are distributing a solution of a, 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 a North European solution that exists today that is already CMR marked and that you can see in the booth from Incepto uh, over there. So we are distributing several solutions and we are co-creating others. If I take back the example of the knee MR, uh, so we are in partnership with a group uh, that, uh, that is called 3R Group uh, in Switzerland. They have a lot of knowledge, expertise on MR, MR knee. Why? Because they are in Switzerland and we are at the end of the season of skiing. So it means a lot of fractures, a lot of pathologies linked to MR, uh, specifically in their, uh, at their site. So with them, we have defined what we want to answer. So we want to help a radiologist, and not only a radiologist, but also a surgeon who would use then the report from the radiologist to uh, help detect what are the different pathologies that could be seen in an MR knee image. So it means right now we are working on meniscus, we are working on cartilage, and on ligaments. So we have grouped uh, or selected uh, tw 22,000 uh, MR data sets, but also the, the um, sorry, radiologist reports that are linked to it. Why? Because I explained to you, we need to have enriched data. If you just get images, you get a lot of, of data that has no, way, no kind of ground truth. So you don't know how to classify them from machine learning. So uh, red, uh, reports help us via NLP, so via uh, already a kind of uh, deep learning kind of technique, uh, extract from the reports what we can see in the image. So before even having another radiologist reread the images, we, need, we know if th this patient has a, a lesion in his meniscus or not at all. So that's the reason why we always get the maximum of information from what we call in uh, the medical domain, from retrospective data. So it means that these patients already uh, were uh, sent to a clinical site, were having this, uh, this radiology uh, called examination and this radiological report. And from this, we are sometimes enriching the data via our platform to be able to deposit other like boxes or other information on top of images. Why? Because we are speaking about 3D kind of data sets. I'm always speaking about images, but images mean in, in MR is a set of slices that corresponds to a volume of a patient. So we are in a 3D world, and in 3D, it means we, we need to add more information so that the deep learning kind of algorithms could focus on the specific region of interest around the meniscus and not think the meniscus could be anywhere in the, kind of, in the volume of, of the image. So this is an example of meniscus. 
So right now, if I take back this example, we have performances that are better. So it's kind of a scoop to for today, but better than Stanford University, and that we are currently uh, publishing uh, in in uh, in scientific uh, kind of uh, of conferences for meniscus, and we are progressing this. Uh, we, are, we are continuing this on ligaments and uh, and cartilages, as I explained to you. So this is one example of a co-creation uh, project. We have others. Uh, we have uh, another one in small bowel, so small bowel occlusions. So here, uh, for the ones who don't know, and another one with surgeons on the aneur aneurysm uh, aorta uh, for aorta in s in CT scanner. So these are the co-production uh, uh, projects we currently are going on, and what we are doing right now and why we are hosted by AWS is that we have hosted our platforms on top of AWS. So as I explained to you, having just images, raw images is not enough. We need to enrich them. So we have a platform dedicated to data enrichment and training. Uh, and AWS helps us a lot and to easily set up this, this uh, environment so that it could be distributed who are, is currently annotating the examination, it me, we need to have radiologists in, in front of us. We need to have the best exp, uh, clinical expertise to be able to annotate properly our examination. And our radiologist time is costly. Is, they are not available all the time, uh, of course, and uh, it's a good, uh, a, 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 a good reason because they have patients and they have patients to take care about. So we need to make sure that the, these uh, solutions are available for them when they are available. So this is one aspect. Second, uh, once a, an algorithm is ready, it's not the end. And it's what you could see uh, in the demo. We need to integrate back the results to the clinical site. This is a lot of automation in where also uh, we have AWS running underneath. So it means that we are using at one end, really the uh, availability aspect of the cloud, and at the other end, also the availability of the cloud computing aspect. We are highly demanding in terms of GPUs for, the, for our deep learning. So as a conclusion, uh, the way we do it, so I explained to you deep learning and, and uh, AI or AI in general inside medical imaging is not a futuristic vision. It's a reality today, we are able to train algorithms, we are able to deploy them in clinical workflow so that it could be used. I took the example of DMRI, not only for knee MRI, also for mammography, for CT lung uh, cancer, for, uh, for example, MR, um, multiple sclerosis kind of detection. So we have a lot of different algorithms that are in place today or that will be in place tomorrow. So it's a reality that is expected by radiologists so that they can gain back time for their, their patients at the end. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, as I explained to you, we are available.